we're setting up our uh, shaper vise. It's already set up, but I was going to talk about how I generally do it. This is a surface gauge, um, a medium size. This would be a large Sterrett surface gauge. These have pins, front and back, the large and the mediums, that you can push down and bear across an edge. And they also come in little bitties. This is a little brown and sharp. So I have a Lufkin and a Sterrett and a brown and sharp. I'm a bit of a tart when I come to tools. As long as it works, it's fine. So I can slide this my little test indicator and I've got it sitting just there on 10 just barely touching because if you go across bumps it'll do strange things so I see the front of my jaw is there and you can also just lift it up and pull it back in and there you have to remember when you've got weight to keep weight on the back of your surface gauge Must have a burr on there. And it's still sitting on 10 there. And still sitting on 10 there. Let's see if I can't zoom this in a little bit. And uh, maybe you can see it a little wide again. So I have my vise right this way. On these machines, this is a uh, tool room shaper. Let me get my surface gauge out of the way here, a little bitty one. Put the stir it where it's not going to get in trouble. Uh, the table rotates to any angle you want, uh, and getting it back to zero sometimes can be a papa bear. And I will set an indicator up like this. You can adjust the table with a support foot that's out in front underneath the table here. I usually don't. I lock the table and I just drop the support foot. And if I need to shim, I'll use a cigarette paper or something underneath the piece if I'm cutting a long piece. And it, it's not hard to work to better than a half a thousandths. You traverse the table this way, I've already done it. And uh, that is how you get the table rotation back to zero. And it's a pretty easy setup. One thing you do have to remember when you're using a dial indicator like this, a travel indicator, um, make sure that it's square this way and this way so that you don't have tangent error when you're reading. If you get the dial indicator often like this direction, um, that's going to give you a tangent error of probably that looks to be about 15 or 20 degrees and you can figure out the ratio just by using the tangent function it'll say you've got a thousandths and it's really more like a thousandths and three or four tenths so those are the tools I use to set the shaper up